Um, I'm Monica Lynch. I'm a final year doctoral research student. Uh, my first degree is in law, and uh, my well, and my master's in law as well. Um, professionally, I worked in employment law before I decided to go back and uh, do my uh, PhD. Um, what I'm going to talk about today is um, about my journey into my PhD and how it brought me into uh, what I'm really going to touch on today, which is the constitutional crisis, which we're witnessing here in, a, in the UK at the moment. Um, Brexit, Brexit which questioned the balance of powers between the three branches of our state, executive, executive um, judiciary and legislature, and about um, also putting a question into, well, putting under question the unit, unity of our, our United Kingdom. Um, my uh, doctorate is broadly about the role of law in a process of uh, systemic transformation. So I'm looking at the function of law, both at the breaking of, um, of polities and at the joining. Um, and so, for example, I'm looking on, at quite a few events, uh, starting from, for example, the Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia, um, Poland, Ireland, and yes, I'm looking at Brexit. And I do anticipate a few of you will think, well, what Brexit really has to do with breakup of, and how can I actually level uh, studying to Brexit with um, studying uh, what happened uh, when Poland uh, changed from the communist system into capitalism or the breakup of Yugoslavia. The, the key is that all those instances, in all those instances, the polities were bound by law. And this is precisely what we are observing now in the process of Brexit, the process of disentanglement <coughs> from the structure that we were not aware how much we were deeply entangled into. Um, so, for example, uh, when I'm looking at uh, for, for example of Poland, I'm, I'm a Polish national, so um, starting from that, um, here, of, of course, we would accept that um, new, constitu new constitution is normally enacted by the new, <coughs> new powers in order to legitimize them, in order to um, also in order to make a demonstrative break from the past. So, for example, in Poland, we had 1989 uh, round table talks. This was followed very swiftly by the new government uh, trying to weed out and erase any, any um, relevance, uh, any relations to, um, to the People's Constitution, People's Republic Constitution that we have had from 19, uh, 1952. Uh, they uh, first did just a little intermediary constitution, which was just an April, um, uh, April um, um, amendments, novelization uh, in um, 1989. This was followed in 1992 by the small constitution, and then 1997 we've got the proper constitution from the, the non. In all those processes, nobody questioned uh, the power balance in the country. Nobody questioned the legitimacy of the relations between the power, structured, power structures. Um, similarly, in, uh, in um, Czechoslovakia or in, um, in, in Yugoslavia, whereas here, when we come to our current situation here in the UK, Brexit questions all of those elements that in those previous transitions were, w w they seemed orderly and, um, and established. Um, so, um, if we can just very briefly remind ourselves about the um, fundamentals of our uh, constitution and constitutional system. So, yeah, first and the prime, first the most important thing is that the British constitution is, is rooted in parliamentary sovereignty. This is something we cannot forget. It's a unitary state, yes, but it devolves uh, powers to Scotland, Northern Ireland and Wales. Um, and, of course, this is something that's going to be quite complicated in Brexit, the reclaiming of power by uh, those uh, devolved uh, administrations. Then, of course, our system, as I said, parliamentary democracy uh, under the constitutional monarchy. Um, and, of course, representative democracy. We cannot forget that. We are not the direct democracy, democracy country. We are representative democracy. We elect people that we want, want to they want, uh, that, that are going to represent us. Um, executive power in our country, um, yes, upon consent of monarch, uh, prime minister is bound to make decision with other cabinet members. And also, members of cabinets, of course, are drawn from the parliament and are answerable to parliament. This is part of the parliamentary sovereignty. 
um, which uh, of course um, is 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 well, the primacy. It's all on the route and the primacy. Finally, the, the independence of uh, judiciary, independence of of both houses. Uh, of judiciary from both legislative and executive powers. Um, going on to constitution, yeah, we can we can also say well we haven't got a written constitution. Um, however, of course, maybe it's not fully written, but we've got co uh, conventions, uh, laws, judgments, writing about how the things been uh, conducted. It is partially crystallized because, after all, we had Magna Carta 1215, uh, Bill of Rights, uh, Reformed Acts, Parliamentary Acts from 1940s. Also, the fact that the, the accession to the to European Union, to a human rights organization, international organization, part by part, codifies our um, our um, constitution. Uh, what we, of course, mustn't forget is the Fixed Term uh, Parliament Act 2011, which seems to be a little bit of a problem at the moment. Um, so, very briefly, what, what uh, if I just go into all those elements um, in, in order to establish what's actually going wrong? So, firstly, yes, questioning the, the current Brexit situation. Um, exposed weaknesses of our uh, constitutional system and putting down the very foundation of our, of our um, system. So, um, the relationship of executive and legislative has been questioned, the role of judiciary, the role of executive um, and the realms of um, his exercise of prerogative powers, uh, role of democracy, I mentioned it already, uh, questions about the, our union and the role of the head of state, the queen. So, just very briefly, um, I'll just try and unpick each and every single one of them. Um, role of referendums. Traditionally, referendums are only advisory. And this was also confirmed in the first Miller case in 2016, where it was, was stated that uh, the, our, uh, the referendum was advisory for the lawmakers in Parliament. And what's gone wrong? Obviously, the media picked it up. And here I can kind of mention the uh, uh, inflammatory language mm -hmm. that was used. Uh, just to kind of spin it as if the, um, the referendum was more than it really was, a purely advisory decision. Um, so, so this was the first one. Then, relationship between executive and legislature. Kind of <laughs> where to start on this one. Um, we've got executive, prime minister, that is, of course, appointed by Queen, upon, um, and also upon the consent of... Uh, what, well, it has to work with the parliamentary concept of the... Uh, sovereign parliament. Uh, the government only governs is, if it's got confidence of the house. At the moment, we've got a prime minister who's a, who was a min minority government. I think it was only 298 that supported him last time against 650. Um, so, of course, he does not command majority. Um, yet, he's even more so, he's prepared to disobey the laws and not respect the laws, like the Act of Parliament. Uh, that was put by um, Hillary Benn. Um, he says openly that he's not going to, to respect it. He behaves in a way that he, well, as if he was not open to the uh, parliamentary scrutiny. Um, also, he claims that he's got a mandate of people. I wonder who the people are. Um, well, he, well, I don't want to kind of start with a whole lit litany, but it looks like he lied to Queen um, and he attempts to silence the parliament, attempted to silence the parliament for, um, I think altogether, was it three weeks, four weeks per, per, per to the prorogation? Accounting, accounting for the conference season in ten days. There you go, there you go. Um, exactly. I mean, as far as I, I recall, not that I recall that, but as far as I'm aware, the last time this actually happened, it was Charles I who attempted to prorogue parliament. I think he did it for 11 years. Um, then, he, then the parliament came back and, uh, and because parliament didn't want to do what, um, what Charles I wanted them to do, they, I believe they um, brought him to a trial and they executed well, this him. Is, um, it's a false parallel because what was attempted then, it was an attempt by Charles I to create law without parliament a different thing. Excuse me, but speaking is being recorded. Can we keep the questions not being recorded? Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I just draw the parallel because last time, as, I, as I'm saying, there was also another situation with uh, his um, ancestor, <coughs> with, uh, with John, John II. He also attempted to prolong Parliament and, and ended up in exile. This is against our system. 
um, where the where the parliament is is first and and primus. Of course, a head of state and um, queens got pretty much dragged into all this. Um, the, at the moment, it's just her role is purely. Uh, purely rubber stamping the the, the propositions. Um, however, what is also what, what I also wanted to, to point out is to the role of judiciary, and I think this is the the key. That up till now, um, if everything's gone wrong in our constitution and the system of checks and balances was 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 not right, it could always go back to the Supreme Court for for the ruling that everybody was respect. <coughs> After all, Supreme Court is the highest court of the land and is there to keep uh, checks and balances to ensure uh, lawfulness of laws passed and, and so on. Um, unfortunately here, um, the, the, the last stop that was put in a, um, like, like a safety stop that was put in a, in a way of our Prime Minister um, is also, he appears to also uh, delegitimize uh, the, the ruling of, um, of 11, 11 judges. Uh, bottom line is that up till now, my understanding is that uh, our constitution could evolve. And for example, in a time when we needed a ruling, this this would be this gap would be filled by Supreme Court with making important decisions on our constitutions. However, if we've got a um, well executive uh, dictator, the dictator who does not obey and does not follow the highest court in a land, we are in a pickle and we are in a real. Po constitutional crisis, because I honestly cannot see the way out of it if the highest court of the land and highest court of the land's law is not respected by our Prime Minister. Thank you.